I'm going to bring up a very vital feature to me. That's the channel strip. And that, what that gives me is a fader in my sidebar of the consolidated window. And the beauty of this fader here is that it updates in real time. Any track that I click on is instantly reflected in the channel strip. So I don't have to switch over to my mixing board and go locate the track I'm dealing with. I can just see it in the sidebar. OK, on to some other new features. I'm going to take a gander into the MIDI editor. I'm going to zoom up on that chord right there so you can take a look. There are some visual enhancements that are very useful. The keyboard on the left is now much bigger and more legible, so you can see what you're working with. And the MIDI notes are now shaded according to velocity. And if you zoom in high enough, you'll actually see the name of the pitch inside the bar. The shading is also very useful because it's showing us how loud those MIDI notes were triggered. So that's, a, that's pretty loud. They're all about 90% there. But if I want to reduce them in velocity, I have instant visual feedback, and I can now work with my, with my MIDI bars, my MIDI notes, in a much more flexible way. So a little visual enhancement there. But we're going to take it a step further with the next feature I'm going to show you. If you're accustomed to working with MIDI, you, pr you may do a lot of work in the region menu where you can do things like transpose, quantize, uh, change velocity, all that kind of stuff. So let me demonstrate a, a little and very powerful new feature using change velocity. Let's say with that chord, that green chord I have highlighted, I would like to up it by five values, five ticks each. Well, I can do that. I could hit apply. It would be done. Fair enough. But let's take a look at a new way to do that. I'm going to go to the mini menu of the change velocity window. And I'm going to now save this as a preset. I'm now saving the plus five, which is my preference right now. And Digital Performer will ask me, what, hey, what do you want to call this preset? And I'd like to call it CV for change velocity plus five. I'm going to save that. And let's do the same for the opposite. So let's say I'd like to reduce velocities by minus 5. I'm guess, I'm, I'll save that as CV minus 5. OK. Now let's get out of this window, because it's not my intention to actually do it right now. But I'm going to switch over to a very powerful window that's been digital performer a long time, the commands window. Now commands allows you to assign keyboard shortcuts to literally everything in digital performer. There are hundreds and hundreds of functions here. And thank God that we have a search bar for it. So I'm going to use that search bar. And I'm going to type CV for the presets I just created. And you can see now that all, all my custom presets, the two ones I just created, are now available from the commands window. This is a new thing in digital performer 10. So I can now assign keyboard shortcuts to, the, to my favorite presets. So let's set key 1 to Q. Uh, that's going to go up. And the down will assign to Z, which is already assigned to something, but that's not a conflict. So I'm going to go ahead and double assign it. Close that. And now, when I'm in my MIDI editor, if I hit the Q button, I can instantly turn my velocity up. And if I hit the Z button, I can instantly turn my velocity down. So what I just showed you with the presets, the CV plus 5 and minus 5, you can do with anything. You can do it with quantizing. Many people have their favorite quantizing presets. I need to quantize the eighth note, the eighth note triplet, the quarter note, the this, the that, all that kind of stuff. You can customize the way that you like to work and assign as many keyboard shortcuts as you want to it. Ah, but it doesn't stop there. Another very useful feature in the commands window, and I'm going to search my CV again. I'll zoom in here so you can see this clearly. We've always had the ability to assign keys to our shortcuts, but we can also assign MIDI events. This opens up a lot of worlds of possibilities. If you have a keyboard with extra buttons on it, extra pads that you would like to assign to your favorite presets, or if you have a pad controller, one of those 8 by 8 ones, and you just like to start assigning those to your favorite presets, or if you're using an iPad with an OSC app, you could assign a, a custom named button on your iPad to change velocity up and down, and you can really customize your workflow in very powerful ways. Now, Let's say you are way into this and you're going to go to town and customize 50 or 100 of these, so you're working your way. Well, at that point, it becomes impossible to remember all your custom shortcuts. There is yet one more way to access all these things, and that is the brand new Run Command window. It's assigned to Shift Space by default, so I'm going to hit Shift Space. And when I do, you see a window that, that's a little bit analogous to Spotlight in the Mac OS. And it's ready for me to type any command I want. If I were to type CV for my change velocity, I see my two presets there. Um, if I needed to quantize, I just ty type quant, and I get every command in Digital Performer that mentions quantizing. If I want to do byte gain, there's all my commands related to bytes. So 
it, it's basically Spotlight for Digital Performer, and it enables you to navigate around Digital Performer much faster if you're not the keyboard shortcut kind of person.